Hi, I'm Gordon Peary, and we were listening to just a little bit of Durang's Hornpipe to open this video. Uh, that was a recording that I made, I think it was back in 1987, with the New Hampshire Fiddlers Union. I've been playing for contra dances for over 40 years, and the one thing that is common with all of them is that it opens just like that tune did, with your classic four potatoes. I've never heard anyone explain why they're called uh, four potatoes, but it kind of makes sense if you think about it. It feels like four potatoes. What else would you call it? Um, this video is going to be talking about the importance of keeping the beat in playing for dances. Uh, other videos will get into uh, embellishments that you can do both rhythmically and harmonically, but we're going to be pretty strictly focused on that. So let's talk about those potatoes here. You have starting off a reel. You're hitting usually the root note of the chord and then the five note of the chord that the piece is, is in. So in this case we're in the key of D. Going back and forth, there are other things you can do with that, but that's just kind of, uh, that's the basic and that's what you want to start with. If you were doing a jig, it would be... 6-8 time. And if you're playing a waltz, uh, I guess then it would realistically be more like six potatoes you're going to be... But whatever you're doing, it's the job of the piano player to make sure that the dance gets started in the right way. It's also the job of the piano player to make sure that that sticks through the entire dance. You're going to be driving the tune. Uh, later on, we'll talk about ways that you can steer the tune, but right now we're talking about driving the tune. Now, to get there, let's take an F-250 or some other robust uh, real four-wheel drive vehicle, uh, as opposed to, a, say, an all-wheel drive Subaru or whatever. There is a difference, and the difference, if you've ever owned a uh, four-wheel drive truck, is that you're not supposed to engage the front wheels unless you're on ice or snow or wet pavement. And the reason for that is that the front wheels are going just slightly faster than the rear wheels. And so the front of the truck actually wants to go faster than the back, but obviously it can't, so it just kind of goes along. But if, you, if you're on dry pavement, it's going to stress, stress it out. So um, the, you want to go for that same idea when you're playing for dances, or actually playing for many, many different genres of music, where it, you want to sound like you're speeding up but you aren't actually doing that. And that kind of infuses a certain energy, a certain drive into the tune. That's something that you hear uh, in, in basses and in bluegrass, for instance. There's always that driving thing. You think, wow, they must be speeding up, but they really aren't. So you've got your four potatoes. And you could keep playing through an entire tune, sort of using that idea. Nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, that was really the technique, the boom chick technique that I learned and many people learned from Bob McQuillan, who was my mentor. Uh, Bob was one of the most important figures in contra dancing, both in terms of writing tunes and in teaching musicians and, and just supporting the dance community overall. I do have more information about Bob on my website, so I won't take the time now, but please go there and you can learn about him if you don't know about him already. So you've started the tune, and you're doing your four potatoes, your boom chick. If you want to experiment a little bit more with just some rhythmical devices to maybe pick it up and drive it a little bit more aggressively, uh, you can just add some extra beats, uh, especially in the right hand. It's a little bit exaggerated. You wouldn't do that all the time, but it's just something to throw in there. Uh, you also can kind of double up on your thumb with the left hand, so you're doing something like this. As I said before, there are all sorts of other devices that we can do in terms of harmony and sort of steering the tune as opposed to driving it. Uh, but right now we're really focused on the rhythm. Um, what I'd like to do now is bring in my friend Randy Miller, who's a fabulous fiddler and the author of the New England uh, Fiddler's Repertoire. 
Randy and I, uh, because of the pandemic, aren't allowed to visit each other, but I asked him if he could um, just take a video recording of himself playing the March of St. Timothy, and what I've done is that I've played along with that, and we put together uh, just a little demo of some possibilities for that tune. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll show you that now, and then I'll follow up kind of explaining a little bit what we did. So what was going on there? Um, the first time through, very, very basic boom chick. And then the second time through, I did something that I actually hadn't talked about before, which was kind of trying to uh, highlight the rhythm by not playing it. You know, I was sustaining it. And at that point, people then start listening more to the fiddle and what they're doing, and it allows the fiddle to just for a few seconds be the instrument that's sort of declaring the rhythm. In other words, uh, you can kind of point out what the rhythm is by, by not playing it. It's a technique that you don't want to overuse at all, but uh, it is applicable to what we're talking about. And then um, <clears throat> the um, uh, third time through, I got into some uh, syncopation. And syncopation is also something that you don't really want to overdo. I was overdoing it there just to sort of uh, illustrate it. Um, and syncopation is very tricky. In order to syncopate, you have to have something to syncopate against. So you have to make sure that the melody lends itself to that. And if you're playing with other rhythm instruments, then you really need to be uh, coordinating with them, either through extreme intuition or maybe uh, by something that you've talked about doing beforehand. So those are the very basics of doing rhythm stuff for contradance piano playing. I'd be happy to talk to anyone or to write to, back and forth to uh, anyone if you have questions about it or if you have ideas. Um, go to my website and you can find out how to contact me. It's gordonperrymusic.com. And I want to put in a major plug for main fiddle camp. I'm preparing this video largely because uh, Maine Fiddle Camp will not be happening in the usual way this summer, and I wanted to provide the opportunity to, to um, you know, provide some information that might be helpful for aspiring piano players. There is a lot going on in other areas virtually in terms of, of classes and concerts and so forth. Go to mainefiddlecamp.org, check it out. If you've never been to Maine Fiddle Camp, uh, by all means go and um, 
get on their newsletter and so forth and, and find out what's going on there. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. So thank you for your time today.